What's going on guys? Antonio Petroli here from Signal Fire Audio, here to demo a sweet little script that I found on the Cocos forums for aligning vocal tracks together in an automated way. I'm going to give you a quick demo now, and if you're still interested in it, please watch the rest of the video. It's quite long because there's a decent amount of setup and there's a lot to talk about with it, but if you enjoy it, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. So here we go. Here is the before take, which is two different vocal takes uh, with the same lines on top of each other. You send from hell my majesty! As you can hear, it is pretty butchered. Uh, the second line has a lot of transients that don't line up, syllables that don't line up, and fun things like that. So here is the same exact take after just applying the script to it and pretty much, you know, hitting one button and running it. From hell, my majesty! All right, so first thing we need to do is actually get a copy of Reaper. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Reaper is a digital audio workstation just like Cubase or Pro Tools. Uh, I've been using it forever, and personally, I love it. Uh, so you want to go to this page, reaper.fm slash download, and all of these links I'll have in the description below of this video. Uh, click your platform. For me, I'm Windows 64-bit. Uh, this is going to be for the latest version, 5.50, at least from when this video was made. So once it's done downloading, just go ahead and install it. I'm going to install a portable version because I already have it, and uh, I want to walk you through all the steps for this anyway. So go ahead and run it. It's going to install Reaper, and there you go. 20 seconds, and we have Reaper installed. So next thing we want to do is download the SWS extension packages. These are actually plugin extensions that are built specifically for Reaper. Um, so go ahead and click your platform again on Windows 64 bit. I'm going to go ahead and install this. Open it up. Uh, fuck you, Windows. We're going to run it anyway. All right. So uh, go ahead and agree to the EULA, and you want to install this in the same directory that you have Reaper installed. So for most of you, it's probably going to be program files, Reaper, 64-bit or 32-bit, depending on what you have. Uh, I'm using the portable version, so I'm going to install it where I have Reaper Portable installed. But for most of you, you can just leave the default destination folder. So go ahead, extension DLL grooves, just go ahead and install both of them, and that's that. So finally, uh, let's go to the actual plugin and I'll give you a quick rundown of it before we go ahead and get it going. So this is the Align Takes plugin page, uh, at least where the guy first released it. Uh, so this is gonna have a bunch of documentation on how to use it. So it tells you about all the different knobs and how to use it and what you're trying to look for. Um, honestly, it's not super intuitive and it's a bit overcomplicated for maybe some commercial plugins that you have, but this is a free tool, and once you get it down and become a power user, I'm sure you'll be, you know, better off anyway. So, uh, what you want to do is go down to the source right here. There's a link, so it actually goes to his GitHub. For those of you who don't know, GitHub is basically just used to store and commit new code bases. Um, so, this is the actual code base right here. Uh, it's in a scripting language called Lua that I've I've never used myself. I write in Python and a bunch of other things, but. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about it and what's actually going on under the hood, you can feel free to poke around at this. But um, this is the guy's GitHub, Michael Piliovsky. I'm sure I'm fucking that up. But uh, all of his different scripts that he has live in here. So uh, there's going to be a button on the right side that says clone or download. Just go ahead and click download zip. Uh, I'm actually going to save that in my Reaper directory. Um and that's going to download the actual zip file that has everything. So what we're going to do is unzip it. I'm just going to extract it to its own thing. Um, you can actually have it live anywhere, but personally, I'm going to put it in the scripts directory within my uh, Reaper install directory. So now you can see we have rescripts master. Um, again, the naming convention is just a thing from GitHub, but don't worry about it. All right, so go ahead and open up your copy of Reaper that you just installed or have had installed. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go up to your Actions uh, tab up here and click Show Action List. 
And what you're going to see here is basically a huge list of actions that you can do in Reaper, uh, all the different shortcuts and stuff you can assign to it. But all that we're going to need to do today is down here, you're going to see Rescript. There's going to be New and Load. What you're going to want to do is click Load. And then this is going to open up that scripts directory that we saw before. So go into that uh, directory that you downloaded, the Rescripts Master. And you're going to have all these different uh, categories and directories for different scripts. And all you need to do is go to the last one, which is called Various. Double click that. And you're going to see MPL underscore align takes dot Lua, right? And then there's going to be another one that says without GUI. Uh, I haven't used the one without GUI. I don't know why you would, but I'm going to use the one that has the regular version. So go ahead and open that up. And what you're going to see now is that in your actions, we have a new entry right here. It's script MPL align takes dot Lua, right? So now we have it actually as a command and an action in Reaper. But what I want you to do, and this is going to make life much easier, because otherwise you're going to have to keep going into this, just add it as a shortcut, uh, whatever shortcut you want. So for instance, for me, uh, you can type a key, and essentially it'll set that. So I'm going to do Control, Alt, and then A as an Apple. Right. So now anytime I press Control, Alt, A, it's going to open up that script. So let's see that in action. Control, Alt, A and you see it pop up here. Um, so this is the actual script. It looks just like a plugin, but I call it a script because that's what it is. Um, but that's it right there. So now anytime we wanna open it as we do our editing and we're working through songs, just like any other thing, Control, Alt, A, opens up. You can set it to whatever you want, but that's what I'm gonna have it as. All right, so I have this song here that I'm working on. Uh, I'm writing it right now, and I did some pre-production vocals today. Uh, I made sure to double-track them just for the sake of doing this demo, so let's go ahead and give it a listen. Pretty cool. So uh, this is actually something I recorded earlier today. The takes themselves are actually pretty naturally tight together. Um, I've worked with way sloppier stuff before, so this should be uh, a nice little way to make this utility shine and show you what it can do. All right, so let's give a listen to just the raw vocal take for the first part. Oh, the sky's turned black and the heavens fall. So as you can hear, it's not terrible. Uh, a few of the transients don't line up perfectly, and it's a little washy in certain parts just because it's not super tight. But for the most part, it's it's pretty good as it is right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to clean it up a bit with this script, and I'm going to show you how that works. So for our top, our top track right here, this is going to be our guide track. So the assumption here is that this track is already uh, edited and lined up with the song how it's supposed to sound, right? And then our bottom track is going to be our dub track. So this is the track that we're trying to tighten up to the top one. So what you want to do is hold right click, drag over both the uh, takes right here. Again, right click, drag over them, and you'll see they're both highlighted. Uh, we're going to do our hotkey from before, Control, Alt, A as an alpha. And you're going to see the GUI for this pop up. So first thing that we need to do is analyze these waveforms. So this get button right here is going to do that for you. So you see it's analyzing takes and uh, here we go. So uh, what you're looking at right now is the top part, the reference right here is your guide track, the one I was talking about before, which is this top one. And then the bottom part is your dub track, which is down here. And you can see it has the actual track names too, which is pretty nice. So what it's doing right now with the default settings is you see these little green markers and what these green markers represent is when it thinks a uh, word starts and when it thinks a word ends as well. Uh, this is pretty close, honestly. It doesn't look perfect, but it's pretty close and we'll probably get the job done for most of you. Uh, so I'll give you a quick demo of it before we get into the you know much finer controls as far as what they do. So essentially, this is just a big slider and the simplest form, so we have down here, this is basically no uh, alignment on it, and then at the end down here is gonna be 100% alignment. Now you can see that on the actual bottom track down here, the dub track, these green markers that we were looking at before have actually been, um, 
are actually embedded now into the actual take itself. Um, so there's different things that you can do as far as like timing and uh, you know time stretching and stuff like that. But that's this is gonna, this is going to take care of all of that for us. So as I pull this slider over, you're going to see all of these little words start moving around, trying to line up with here. Okay, so let's drag it. And you can see everything's just slowly aligning by itself, right? So now what we have is with the default settings, 100% alignment. So we'll give that a listen. Oh, the sky's turned black and the heavens fall. And with it off. Oh, the sky's turned black and the heavens fall. So you can hear how it's much tighter like this. Uh, for those of you who are somewhat new to this, you might be going, hey, what's the deal? It doesn't really sound that much different. But for those of you who have done editing for a decent amount of time, you know that's a pretty impressive thing to do just automated like that. So let's listen to it real quick, corrected with the song. All right, pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and do the uh, next part, same way. I'm just gonna breeze through it so you can see how quick you can really do it. Right click it, top guide track, bottom dub track, open it up, analyze it, correct it. I'm just gonna do this blindly and let's listen. Well. Oh, whoops, let's turn the song off. I mean, that's pretty tight. That sounds pretty good in my ear, at least. Um, you know, that would save me a ton of time of having to put in the little markers and do slip editing and time stretching and all that. And at the very least, if this gets you to close to where you want to be, you can still actually go in here and do things like slip editing, let's say, if you want to make things a little bit tighter. You can do time stretching and all that kind of stuff still. Um, so this is nice at the very least to do 80% of the work for you and you can, you know, polish it off at the end. So what I want to do for this last part is I want to go into a little bit more of the advanced uh, features of this script because um, one, I need to kind of learn them myself and two, it'd be interesting for you guys to see. So what we've been doing so far, again, is just highlighting both tracks. We click get, analyzes the take, we see our markers and we drag it, right? Now let's say we want a little bit more fine-tuned control over it, right? we have this plus sign down here below get. And if you click that, it's gonna open up a bunch of fun knobs to play with. Um, so essentially, again, the idea here is that we want these green markers to be at the beginning and at the end of every word, right? Because that's gonna give it um, points to basically embed themselves, as we can see right here, and then do the time stretching based on that. So if you don't have this perfect, or if you just make the settings way out of whack, you're gonna see a lot of weird stuff happen because again, these markers are more important and defining parts of how this is gonna handle what it's gonna do. All right, so again, uh, I'm gonna just fuck with these and make it absolutely terrible. Let's do get on that. So now you can see there's a ton of markers here. Right, And as I start adjusting it, it's going to actually embed them. So what happens with this is when you play with these settings and you completely make it all crazy, like we can see that we don't just have a marker at the beginning and end of every word. We have a bunch of markers in between, uh, you know, in the middle of them, there's a bunch of them. And where there's silence, there's a bunch of them. So what you're going to actually see here is for every point that it has, as you increase this, it's going to do a lot of weird shit. So you can see like... Instead of just taking this and time stretching it maybe by like 1.04, it's actually breaking it up into a bunch of different pieces and saying like one dot, you know, almost one X here, almost two X here, and then less than one X here, right? So that's going to sound really weird. And actually, let's go ahead and listen to that. Oh, my majesty! So you can hear that time stretching effect. Obviously the pitch is preserved, but it still sounds super weird. So again, what you want here ultimately is to have your marker set in a way where they're before and after each word. So uh, I'll talk real quick about what some of the knobs represent. And honestly, I'm not super, uh, you know, good with what they actually are, but I can go through them as best as I can. So uh, first thing that's probably the most important is the threshold. So you can see here, if you play with the threshold, there's actually this line right here. 
and you're going to see how it goes over the waveform. So this sets the threshold for where the markers are. Uh, the lower you make it, obviously, the tighter it's going to be towards... Um, you know, negative infinite dB, let's call it. Um, and then as you go farther out, you can see it's just touching the top of it, almost like how you would visualize a clipper plug-in. Um, so you want to set that. I honestly just play with it a bunch and see what I get out of it. Um, you know, if I set it all the way up, uh, that's what we had before. If I set it all the way down, it might have a few more markers. But for the most part, it seems that if the takes are recorded at a decent volume, it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, another knob that we have here is called scaling so what scaling does is actually it scales the waveforms for the threshold to work with and it actually compresses them and makes them bigger so you can see here we have like very tight transients with silences in between and if we actually turn scaling up you can see how those transients kind of disappear just as if you you know crushed it with a compressor or maybe even a limiter let's say so we have rise area, rise fall, filter area. Uh, I read over this post in, this, in the forum, and honestly, I'm not super keen on what these are. What I, It has something to do with um, how quick a transient is. I think it's almost like attack and release on a compressor, but honestly, I can't say. You should probably just play with it yourself. Um, and then filter area, at least I know what that is. Uh, it's basically the smallest gap that you can have between two different markers, right? So if we crank this up, you're going to see that we're saying it has to be uh, 1,400 milliseconds before the next marker can happen. And now you can see they're just super spaced out, right? And if we make it 100 milliseconds, there's going to be a ton of them, right? So the big knobs for this seem to be scaling, threshold, and filter area. Um, the other thing is search area, and that basically means that once it finds a marker, how far can it move that part of the waveform over? Right, so you can say you're allowed to move it 2,000 milliseconds away from its original marker point, and you might get some funky results with that. Um, but hey, it's there if you want to do it. Um, outside of that, there are the blue knobs, and this is for actually building up envelopes. I'm not going to go into it because, truthfully, I don't know what the fuck they do. Um, but like I said, for the most part, at least for these first two takes that we did, just doing the bare bones default value seems to get us where we want to be. I'm sure if some of you play with this a bunch and become power users with it, uh, you know, the sky is the limit as far as what you can do. Uh, one other thing that's cool about this before we go is that when we actually do this, there are presets that you can set. So if you find something to say like, hey, with this vocalist, with this recording chain and this, you know, signal input, it seems like these values really work for everything. You can actually go ahead and just whatever you have this set to, just do save preset to slot. Let's call it four. Next time you open it, click preset four. You're done. And then you can just, again, play with the big um, fader itself. So I know this was a lot to take in. And I know I rambled a lot. But I hope this video was useful for you guys. I would love to see what you guys end up doing with this. Because like I said, I feel like it's a tool, while somewhat complex, uh, has infinite potential as far as really automating or at least, you know, getting 80% of the job done for what we do with this. So leave a comment below, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time.